Good day, everybody. Uh, welcome, welcome once again. And uh, on this very, very cold uh, day in South Africa, and hopefully for the rest of you in other parts of the world, yeah, hopefully the weather is much, much better where you are. All right, so today I want us to cover uh, redox reactions in galvanic cells. So I'd never really um, made um, just the theoretical or explained the theoretical uh, aspect of this. So I just thought I'd just make a video so that um, you would understand the fundamentals of redox reactions right from the beginning. So uh, if you haven't subscribed, please make sure that you do the right thing and just give us a thumbs up if you like the lesson. Um, but let's just get right into it. OK, so first of all, um, when we talk about redox reactions, right, let's talk about that word redox. So the word redox is actually a compound word or it's just an uh, it's made out of two abbreviations ex uh, essentially right so redox comes from the two words reduction and oxidation okay so we have what we call reduction okay now what is reduction by definition we say that reduction is the gain of electrons all right we're going to talk about it just now so we're talking about the gain of electrons okay and we've got the ox part which talks about oxidation okay so and we actually say that oxidation is the loss of electrons so um these are the two definitions of uh, reduction and oxidation. So here it's the loss of electrons. If you don't mind, I'm just going to use the E minus to designate electrons, right? So now what's simply happening in a redox reaction is that we are actually exchanging electrons. So this is a reaction that involves a transfer of electrons, okay? Hence, uh, at a later stage, we actually now talk about electrolysis, okay? So in this case, uh, what we are simply doing is we are having electrons move from the one uh, um, um, electrode um, to the other electrode, okay? So um, it's just quickly, let's talk about the structure of a galvanic cell. Just to quickly show you, Okay, so a galvanic cell basically usually is made from two beakers, okay, or uh, two containers. And what we have is that we've got an electrode, okay, so an electrode uh, usually made out of uh, metals, but of course you can have a, um, uh, you can have a gas, Okay, so what happens is that you'd obviously have a wire, put a voltmeter there, okay, uh, just to measure the two, and we put it in an electrolyte. So this is a soluble substance, and I'm going to talk about it uh, just so that you, uh, you, you understand it as we go on. And then uh, usually uh, they use a glass U-tube for this, okay. We've got a salt bridge where they take... Uh, a very high, highly uh, um, um, soluble salt, uh, highly concentrated salt, and then you'd have plugs here, uh, porous plugs, right? Like something like cotton wool um, or whatever that may be, right? So essentially, uh, in a galvanic cell, this is uh, this would be the structure. Now we call these guys electrodes. Okay, just keep that in mind. So this would be an electrode. And this would be an electrolyte. Now, please remember what I said to you. Uh, electrolyte. Okay, sorry, I'm squeezing that in there. Okay, so we'd have an electrode and an electrolyte. Of course, the same is true for this side. Okay, you've got an electrode, electrolyte there. Remember that we say that the electrode has to be a, 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 a soluble uh, solution. Okay. Now, ladies and gents, this is just our secret. Please don't tell anyone, right? Um, the rule of thumb is the following. Whenever I give you a metal there, whatever metal it might be, okay? Let's say zinc for argument's sake, okay? So um, what electrode can you possibly, or electrolyte rather, can you use? So if I give you zinc for argument's sake, 
So um, you use the nitrate uh, of that particular metal. Well, why am I advocating for nitrates? Well, all nitrates are actually soluble, right? Uh, um, some of the chloride salts are not sol soluble, like uh, silver chloride. It just makes uh, precipitates, right? Uh, that are not soluble. Um, some sulfates may not be soluble, but uh, we know that all nitrates are soluble. So for argument's sake, if I were to give you lead on this one, okay, which uh, electrolyte would you use there? Lead nitrate, okay? So just remember, um, just as a rule of thumb, should they ever ask you about the type of electrolyte that would be used there? Okay, uh, please always advocate for nitrates. Okay, right. Now, uh, we said we've got uh, electrodes, we've got electrolyte. Now, I want you to please note, we said this is a glass YouTube and we put porous plugs, cotton wool, uh, anything like that, that doesn't allow uh, uh, solids to flow, uh, to move through, but it does allow liquids to flow through. So it's a, it's a semi-permeable uh, sort of membrane, right? Or, or substance. So in this case, um, what do you do? In the salt bridge, you put a highly concentrated salt, okay? Um, so, uh, you know, it could be potassium nitrate, um, you know, you, you try and use something that is uh, relatively soluble. So um, potassium nitrate works quite well. Uh, of course, there are other types. You can even put sodium chloride there, right? Uh, just as long as you make sure that uh, uh, the chloride um, uh, element or rather um, salt uh, would not form a precipitate in any of your half reactions. Okay, right. Now, what I want us to quickly do is I want us to quickly look at uh, how actually does these reactions uh, actually perform? How uh, does reduction take place, oxidation take place? How actually do you know which electrode is your uh, um, uh, anode? Okay, so what we normally say is that the one that undergoes reduction, okay, we call that the cathode, all right? So we say that the electrode okay any of the electrode that undergoes reduction now please i want you to note this the one that undergoes reduction we call that the cathode okay and i'm just going to throw a contrast there between this cell as well as the uh, electrolytic cell so that you understand exactly what the difference is and why i emphasize what i need to emphasize uh, on the electrolytic cell okay now we say that, okay, reduction occurs at the cathode. Now, if you want to, you can just remember the red cat, okay? I used to have a red cat bothering me at my house. So, <laughs> okay, I'll remember that quite well. So, red cat, okay? So, um, you remember that reduction occurs at the cathode. And then we say oxidation occurs at the anode, okay? So, uh, let me use a capital letter there. All right, so reduction occurs at the anode. Now, ladies and gents, let's talk about the physical property or the physical part of this, okay? How would you know that uh, one of the substances undergoes reduction, okay? Well, generally speaking, we say, well, when it undergoes reduction, there's actually a gain in mass, okay? So this one will actually get bigger and bigger, and you'll see why as we um, do the cell, right? So this one gains mass, all right? So as it uh, has more electrons coming onto it, as it undergoes reduction, okay? So it gains mass, and obviously this one loses mass, okay? Right, so this is just the uh, theoretical aspect of things uh, so that you can just know how to generally navigate, okay? Now notice once again, here it's gaining, it's gaining electrons, so in, in effect it means that electrons are being received over here, all right? So this one is losing electrons, okay? So this is where men, uh, electrons are made and they are sent out to the other one, okay? So as a result, uh, it will lose mass in the process, okay? So that's the theoretical part. Now, I want you to please note that first of all, galvanic cells, okay, 
the energy conversion that takes place in a galvanic cell is from electrical, um, sorry, chemical energy, right? So a galvanic cell basically uh, converts chemical energy into electrical energy. I want you to please remember that, okay? Electrical energy. So that's what a galvanic cell does. Now notice this. It means if I'm going to convert chemical energy, so a chemical reaction takes place, and uh, obviously uh, energy, electrical energy is given off. So it means that this has to be a spontaneous reaction. Okay, just please remember that. So it means that this reaction takes place on its own. All right. So it means these chemicals, as soon as they see each other, all they simply do is that they want to react. And then suddenly, uh, in this case, some of the energy that is, uh, uh, um, you know, given off there is electrical energy. It's, it converts it into electrical energy. So remember that this would happen spontaneously. So it means uh, you don't need to put an external source as uh, spontaneous. Okay, so um, it means in this case, it would therefore convert it into electrical energy energy all right now just one other thing that i want us to um uh, to remember is that uh, please note so we say the substance that undergoes reduction we did say that's the cathode so remember red cat so we said the a substance that 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 undergoes uh, oxidation the substance which means the electrode that undergoes oxidation is the anode so if you can just remember an ox, okay, an ox, you know, like mo, all right. So an ox, or you can just remember that the 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 vowels go together, a and o, right. So in this case, we know that uh, it takes place at the anode. Now, ladies and gents, uh, just one other thing that I want you to please note. So the electrode that undergoes reduction, okay we usually call it the oxidizing agent. I'll, I'm going to explain this just a bit. Uh, oxidizing agent. Now, the moment I put agent there, it seems to sort of, you know, you kind of flip the script in a sense. So the uh, one that undergoes reduction, we call it the oxidizing agent. And obviously the one that undergoes oxidation, we call it the reducing agent, okay? Right, we'll, we'll get to it in just a little while, uh, reducing agent, okay? So it's important for you to get these fundamentals so that uh, you would know how the cell operates, okay? So we call this the reducing agent. Now, I want you to think about it just a bit, okay? In order for electrons to be gained, right? The one that gains electrons, why does it gain electrons? It gains electrons because someone has given off those electrons, okay? So, if you think about it, in order for me to gain electrons, right, I am the one that enables, okay, electrons, uh, 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 rather, I am the one that causes this one to lose electrons. Why? Because I want them, okay? So, that's why we say it is the oxidizing agent it causes electrons to be lost why because it's demanding electrons okay so the moment you use agent remember it means uh, uh, you know an agent is not the one that does the thing but it just simply facilitates the process right so um, um, uh, in this case when you look at oxidation right so in order for electrons to be lost or for this one to give away electrons right it's because someone else wants them right so it means uh this one all right uh, 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 um it's giving electrons so that the other one can actually gain them so it is the reducing agent it's the one that causes reduction to take place why because it's giving away the electrons so uh, uh just remember that once the moment that you use agent there okay uh it kind of flips uh, the script a bit okay Right, so um, please, I want you to remember that this is important theory, okay? Um, of course, the most important thing 
is for me to now explain this. Now, the, the way that I want to explain it is I want to take uh, an example, um, you know, of a cell that exists. OK, and I'm going to show you how uh, this process takes place. OK, but now let me just quickly. Let's assume that the cell that we have is a zinc copper cell and I'm going to take zinc and copper okay uh, copper 2 plus right so in this case we're simply saying okay if you've got zinc and copper now I'm going to show you from the uh, standard reduction potential uh, uh, table so that I actually show you what these uh, reduction potentials actually mean okay so let's pull it right there Okay, uh, there it is over there. Okay, so uh, this is typically what our table looks like. Okay, uh, by the way, it doesn't matter. You've got two of them usually for those of you in South Africa. You've got two of these tables. You've got the A and the B, but it's essentially the same thing. Right now, I want you to note in this table that we're given here, you've got some of those reactions there, half reactions. Okay. And you see next to them, there's a, an E standard value and those values are positive, right? And as you go down the table, okay, depending on which table you have there, as you go down, can you see that those values now tend to, uh, towards the negative, okay? Now, what I want us to talk about quickly is why is it that some of them become positive and why that becomes negative? Of course, uh, um, whether you fully understand that uh, is neither here nor there for the exam, but I'll show you actually a quicker way to um, to actually answer those questions. OK, right now, um, let's get into that quickly and look at uh, why those values are positive and why some of them are negative. Now, ladies and gents, um, we usually use what we call a standard hydrogen electrode. OK. Uh, I'm not very good at drawing, okay, so uh, you'll have to forgive me for this. I'm about to commit a crime just now, <laughs> okay. So um, if you think about uh, hydrogen, okay, so it would look something like this. So they use platinum over there, okay. Now think about it, uh, um, uh, hydrogen is a gas, right, okay. So... It's not easy for a gas uh, to give away electrons or in this case, um, uh, you know, to, to be able to transfer electrons uh, to metals. So uh, what happens is that we use platinum over there. And what the platinum actually helps us to do, uh, remember that uh, uh, platinum is an, uh, you know, it's an inactive, you know, we, we, we call it, it's chemically inert. All right, so it does not react with the elements over there, right? So um, uh, platinum actually just uh, enables us to have electrical contact, okay? So as that hydrogen, so you'd have hydrogen in here, we're pumping hydrogen over there, okay? So there's our hydrogen coming in, okay? And uh, so let me just show there are some bubbles over there. So this is the standard hydrogen cell. And of course, you'd have an acid here. And remember what an acid does is that it gives us those H plus ions. Now, if you remember, uh, for those of you who've done the Afbau principle, right? Um, let's talk about the atomic structure of hydrogen. So hydrogen has got a uh, an atomic number of one. So meaning that uh, in its nucleus, OK, uh, as I said, I'm going to commit a crime just now. <laughs> OK, so in its nucleus, it's only got one uh, proton in the nucleus. And as a result, it's also got one electron, OK, uh, on the outer uh, shell. OK, so I'm just making a, a structure of, a, of an atom there, right? OK, so... Um, uh, if you think about it now, for hydrogen, okay, for it to become chemically stable, it can actually give away this electron, all right? It uses the same amount of energy to give away that electron and so satisfy the Afbau principle. Uh, um, remember, for something to be chemically stable, uh, you'd need to satisfy that 2n squared, right? So which n, uh, it's the uh, uh, energy level. So this is the first energy level. 
okay but you can have zero energy levels it means that you can get rid of this electron and you'd have zero over here or you can have a, a energy level number one now in order for something to be chemically stable uh, right at energy level number one you'd need to have um so that's this would be two times one squared okay so in this case you'd need two electrons okay now ladies and gents if you don't understand this that's okay uh, that would be another lesson for another day okay and probably i'll do that when i go through the grade 10 content okay so what you need to know is that hydrogen uses the same amount of energy to either gain an electron or uh, 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 you know uh, to give away an electron so in this case we say that hydrogen therefore becomes our reference now let me tell you why okay so it becomes our reference why because hydrogen says i don't mind i can either give away an electron or i can receive an electron it doesn't matter right so whatever it is that it reacts with right hydrogen would say what do you prefer do you prefer to give away electrons okay so therefore i will gain electrons okay uh if you if if the other substance says no 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 i prefer to gain electrons then hydrogen says no 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 i'll prefer to give away therefore electrons so in a sense hydrogen becomes our reference now please i want you to note okay now we talk about the standard conditions that's why uh, you'll see in the table that i gave you there okay we we talked about standard reduction potentials okay so uh, if you look at the top of that table okay it says standard reduction potentials can you see that right now why do we say standard now ladies and gents please i want you to note very important so we say that there are standard conditions that this cell needs to operate under okay now we've got the following condition condition number one is that we must have a, a temperature of 25 degrees celsius okay so we call that room temperature so that's the first condition so when they call those standard conditions it means these cells will give you those those values under these particular conditions that is okay a temperature of 25 degrees we said that's room temperature okay and secondly um we say that the next standard condition is concentration right of your electrolyte so initially the concentration of your electrolytes must actually be one mole per cubic decimeters so it means in order to generate the numbers that we see in that standard potential table right you must adhere to those conditions that we have over there right so that's room temperature that's a concentration of one mole per cubic decimeter and particularly now uh, ladies and gents only if one of your electrodes is a gas will you mention these these are pretty much standard okay those are these are always there however the next one is only applic uh, applicable if you've got a gas we say that uh, the standard uh, um, uh, pressure must be one atmosphere it means that that would be around uh, 101.3 kilopascals or you can just simply round it off to uh, 100 kilopascals okay so that's one atmosphere of pressure okay so that's 100 kilopascals so it means when we operate these cells all right so these cells uh, will give us those values under standard conditions so the emfs that we have there will operate under standard conditions and those are the standard conditions okay now say for argument's sake now i, I want to take uh, uh, the first example say i take now please i want you to look at this all right so it means if i were to take a standard uh, potential okay i take um let's say i take zinc okay i'm gonna take zinc over there so uh, here's my hydrogen cell okay 
now here's my hydrogen cell and on the other one i would put let's say we put zinc okay right now what's going to happen in the cell so say we've got zinc over there right so we say this one the hydrogen cell is our reference now please i want you to listen to me carefully and i'm going to show you where this comes from so therefore when you've got zinc and hydrogen all right you'll see in your standard potential table okay uh, let's find zinc okay so there's zinc over there that's negative 0 0.76 now what does that number actually mean all right so it means zinc with hydrogen if i were to connect it to a hydrogen cell zinc says no 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 i don't like going that way why because you see when you say negative it means it's losing energy right so if it's losing energy going that way so if i want you to, to imagine it this way um think about uh, you know going uphill right if you are going uphill you'd need to put in energy yourself in order to go uphill right but if you're going downhill you don't even need to put an effort you just simply go there on your own spontaneously so it means zinc going that way undergoing in this case reduction zinc says uh -uh, i don't prefer undergoing reduction why because i lose energy it's like going uphill right so what does zinc do it says nana i prefer actually undergoing oxidation going that way because in that case it's like going downhill for me in that in that regard in that uh, regard okay so if you think about it so zinc with hydrogen so if i were to take a hydrogen cell zinc would say no 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 i prefer to give away electrons okay so therefore hey take those electrons you hydrogen okay so zinc would actually undergo oxidation all right because it says it's easier for me to go to get oxidized why because it's like uh, uh, going downhill for me right so zinc would actually force to give away electrons and therefore hydrogen or the hydrogen half cell would now be forced to uh, accept electrons right so remember all that it simply does is that it's simply saying uh, hydrogen is saying ah i don't i can take anything whether you want me to receive electrons or to gain electrons tell me what you prefer you are the boss okay so in this case zinc says ah i prefer to give away electrons and so zinc gives away electrons and in this case uh, the hydrogen half cell would therefore gain electrons and that's why this cell or rather this table is showing you that going that way giving zinc uh, or zinc ion electrons it's like you are forcing it to go uphill all right uh, but if you wanted to lose electrons that's like oh it can do that spontaneously it can do that very easily when it's with hydrogen okay right so let's take another example uh, say for argument's sake and uh, let's take silver so if you were to replace uh, zinc with silver okay hydrogen again asks the question silver what do you prefer for me to do all right remember uh, hydrogen says i can do just about anything that you want me to do okay right so um silver says ah you know what i prefer to gain electrons how do we know that it prefers to gain electrons because going that way right look at that it now uh, um uh, so it gains energy right so for zinc i mean for silver rather it's easier for it to actually undergo reduction receive electrons and as a result um, become the metal all right uh, why because in this case it gains electron uh, it gains energy it doesn't lose energy right 
okay so in this case we're simply saying okay if it were to react with silver silver says ah uh -uh, i prefer to undergo reduction i prefer to go that way so that i can gain okay who doesn't want to have more hey right so in this case so that i can gain energy so that i can become uh, uh, stable right so um for silver going downhill is actually gaining electrons all right so if it were to react with uh, hydrogen so hydrogen would say all right be because you receive you you prefer to receive electrons i will therefore give you electrons so that you can receive electrons so in a sense ladies and gents to try and help you understand this okay you've got some that prefer to gain electrons okay those are the ones that are over there with the negative okay uh, 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 sorry uh, so those are the ones uh, with the positive rather uh, so they prefer to gain electrons they prefer to undergo reduction okay whereas the ones at the bottom over there well depending on which table that you are using okay so the ones with the negative okay they prefer to uh, lose electrons look at that look at our hydrogen can you see it's got zero over there so uh, hydrogen is simply telling you ah oh, man anything goes for me whether you give me electrons or you gain electrons it's actually all the same for me okay right now uh, perhaps what we should do ladies and gents is that let's take a typical example okay just to show you how to therefore uh, answer questions or to actually uh, just apply this theory on um, on the galvanic cell okay so shall we we're going to take a zinc copper cell and i'm going to show you how to answer questions now let's look at a, um, a zinc copper cell so there it is there uh, just made it easier for us um, okay so uh, say we've got zinc and copper all right and i'll use copper because uh, there's a warning that i want to give you uh, just a little later on right so just quickly what happens on the one half electrode okay uh, on the one half cell rather okay so on this side so remember we said we've got an electrode and we've got an electrolyte right so what would you typically put there as an electrolyte now remember that zinc uh zinc would be um would have generally speaking uh an oxidation number of two plus so there it is over there zinc two plus that's the ionized version of it okay so zinc two plus so in this case because it's got a two plus to write zinc nitrate uh zinc nitrate would be zn no3 okay with a two over there why does it have that two because the nitrate ion has got a one minus so you need two of these uh to uh, bond with one of that okay so that's zinc nitrate if you think about copper as well just be careful about copper ladies and gents that's the warning i wanted to give you all right so the examiner would kind of show you which copper you need to use and how do they do that uh they actually usually just write down the electrodes over there uh, uh, rather the 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 the, um, the ions over there so if they they use for instance copper two plus over there so what they are telling you is that uh, they want you to take the one with the two plus and copper zero which means the solid okay all right so uh, you check there so uh, copper look at this one this one is copper two plus but check on the other side it's copper plus i hope you can see that right so copper two plus and copper plus so it can't be this one but there's another one that says copper two plus and copper zero so it has no number there so there's a zero right so copper two plus and copper zero and that's the one that you want okay so it's got a potential of plus 0.34 okay so please just typically just check uh which copper they want you to use but which electrolyte it's copper here so which electrolyte are we going to use ah uh, uh, almost wrote zinc again so this is going to be copper nitrate okay and in this case this is what we have okay right now remember we said we've got a uh, um we, we've got a highly concentrated salt there 
Uh, by the way, I must just emphasize what is the function of our salt bridge. So just remember that. Okay. Uh, what do we use the salt bridge for? Well, we say that the salt bridge, first of all, it neutralizes uh, excess ions. You'll probably understand that. So it neutralizes excess ions. Uh, excess ions. And secondly, we say that it actually completes the circuit, right? Uh, so it uh, uh, allows for ions to move um, so it completes the the circuit so completes the circuit rather okay so it is the one that enables for this to be a closed circuit right so uh, and by the way without that salt bridge uh, the cell wouldn't be able to operate okay so now ladies and gents i want you to please note okay that the zinc nitrate over here makes it such that you've got Zn2 plus ions. Okay, remember that a salt, uh, uh, a soluble salt, what it does is that it will ionize. Okay, so there's lots of Zn2 plus ions over there. Okay, and on this side, there's copper nitrate. So as a result, there's copper 2 plus ions. I want you to just remember that uh, because we are just going to uh, interfere with that okay right now what we are going to do is look at our half uh, uh, reaction uh, half reactions okay so we go to our standard reduction potentials table all right please i want you to follow me on what i'm going to do i am going to find zinc and copper from my reduction table okay so there's my zinc over there so zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons giving me zinc. That's minus 0 0.76. So I'm going to write it just as it is, right? So this is zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons. And that would give me zinc. Okay. And we've got a potential of minus 0 0.76 volts. Okay. That's obviously when it reacts with hydrogen, it would have that potential, right? So, uh, what about copper? Writing it as it is, copper 2 plus, plus 2 electrons, and that would give me uh, copper there, and I get positive 0 0.34 volts. Now, ladies and gents, how do we then, um, how do we actually uh, get, you know, uh, the reaction that actually takes place? So I want to know which one will undergo oxidation, that is, which one will uh, um, give away electrons, and which one will undergo reduction. And I want us to also decide which ones are our, uh, which direction will our cations move, our N ions, and all of that. All right. Now, please, I want you to stay with me as I do this, uh, uh, as as we go through this section. Right. So you noticed I copied everything as is, right? So now all I'm simply going to say, ladies and gents, is just draw a number line for yourself and say, well, which is the smaller number between the two? Okay, mathematically speaking, which is the smaller number? I'm sure you can actually see. You, you remember that we start with, or, or the, you know, the more negative a number becomes, the smaller it is, right? So it means I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to start with minus 0 0.76 here. I'm deliberately taking my time so that you'll know how to actually answer questions here. So obviously it means the other number. So you always write a number line in ascending order right so it means that uh, your numbers increase that way so i started with the smaller number and the bigger number on this side okay right and i want you to see what i'm going to do very quickly right so we say well in this case okay uh, th there's usually a mnemonic that i use uh, but i'm going to shy away from it uh, so that i don't become very controversial right okay so in this case we normally just say okay so if you think about letters of the alphabet okay we say it's as easy as 
A, B, C, right? So I'm going to do that. So as easy as A, B, C, right? Okay, you can use that as your B, the middle part. Okay, so this one becomes your A and this one becomes your C. Now, what does that stand for? A, do you remember the anode? Okay, so therefore, it tells me this guy is the anode. And so therefore, this one becomes the cathode. That will always be applicable for as long as you've done the right thing over there. So that will be the case, right? So that's your anode and that is your cathode, okay? Right. And what happens at your anode and your cathode? You must please always remember that uh, your electrons will always move from the anode to your cathode, okay? So, in a galvanic cell, obviously, we know that uh, we'll always have electrons moving moving from anode to cathode, okay? So, uh, <laughs> usually for my learners, I just teach them about the ANC rule, okay? Saying that uh, it gives away houses, right? Uh, but obviously, I wanted to shy away from that. Right, so in this case, uh, we're simply saying, all right, so that's as easy as ABC, right? And we know electrons will always flow in that direction. Now, please, I want you to note, all I'm simply going to do, ladies and gents, the anode, on the anode half reaction, okay? So on the anode half reaction, so which one is my anode? Remember, where does the negative 0 0.76 come from? It's from the zinc, right? So I know it means that zinc is my anode. It means that copper is my cathode. Can you see that? Okay, so now... The one that is the anode, I'll always take the half reaction of the anode and I will just simply turn it, write it the other way around. Remember, the anode gives away electrons. So this guy said, I don't like going that way. So I am actually going to prefer giving away electrons. So uh, the anode, you always take the reaction of the anode and you write it the other way around. So uh, what was on the left will now be on the right. So please note the difference now. It goes from zinc and with one arrow. You see it had a double arrow over there, right? So now only with one arrow, it moves from zinc and zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons. So I took that reaction and I actually just swapped it around like that, okay? Just please remember, so this is the half reaction that takes place at the anode. So then I take the cathode. Cathode, I will leave exactly as it is. So the one that is the, on, the, on this side, the cathode, I'll take it exactly as it is. So that's going to be copper 2 plus, plus 2 electrons. The only difference now, instead of a double arrow, I just will only have one arrow. Okay, now. I want you to see what is happening over here, ladies and gents. So all it's all that's happening is that it's saying to you, zinc moved from being zinc and it became zinc 2 plus by giving away electrons. You remember that we said the anode is the one that uh, undergoes oxidation and ox, right? And then cathode, copper 2 plus received electrons and in this case will become copper. Now, all I'm trying to show you, ladies and gents, is that uh, now you can write down what we call the net ionic reaction or the net cell reaction. OK, so all you simply do is you must always make sure that the electrons are the same on either side. So uh, we've got two electrons over here, two electrons there. So they are equal. So we can cancel them out. Right. Number of electrons given equals number of electrons received. And I'm going to write down everything now that's on the left-hand side. So what am I left with? It's going to be zinc plus copper 2 plus, okay, giving me now everything on the right-hand side. I've written everything on the left. On the right-hand side, I've got zinc 2 plus plus copper. Okay, so there you have it. Okay, so this now would be your net cell reaction. Now, usually they may even ask us about the EMF of the cell. So all that you simply do, you are usually given that uh, reaction or equation. Okay, 
uh, I won't show you how to derive it. You just need to know how to use it. That's the most important thing, right? And all that the equation tells us is E cell. Okay, note they always put a standard there. Remember standard conditions? We said uh, concentration, uh, temperature, and pressure, right? So that's going to be E cathode. It's always going to be E cathode standard, okay? Minus E anode, the E standard of the anode, okay? So when they say calculate the EMF, I'm simply going to say, all right, this is going to be uh, E cathode. So which one is my cathode? We said it's copper. What's my potential? That's 0 0.34, okay? Minus in this case, right? So there's the minus there. But remember that the anode was already negative. So that's minus a negative 0 0.76, okay? And in this case, negative times a negative gives us a positive. So we've got 0 0.34 plus 0 0.76, which will give us 1.10 volts. So that's 1.1 volts. So that would be the EMF of the cell. Now, ladies and gents, I want to, to, to give a warning. If you ever calculated this and you get a negative value, it means that you've done something incorrectly. Okay? For the galvanic cell, just remember that your E cell will always be positive. Okay? Right. So now, there it is. We've got our net cell reaction and we've got our, um, um, our, our EMF. Okay? Now, I just want to break it down and show you what actually is happening in the cell. All right? So that you understand it from the perspective in which we started with uh, cathode and anode. So it means in this cell, zinc, the solid, is breaking down or ionizing and forming more Zn2 plus ions. Okay? So it means zinc, the solid, okay, which is this guy over here, is breaking down and forming zinc 2 plus. Okay, zinc 2 plus. Okay, so there's the, the zinc 2 plus ions. But now as it does that, remember, now it obviously now manufactures electrons. It becomes zinc 2 plus because it leaves electrons over here, right? So now those electrons, they are full over here. They now start moving through that wire, okay? So they start moving through the wire over there. Okay, so uh, on this side, as these electrons arrive, now think about it. This guy is transporting electrons and bringing them onto the side. Now the copper 2 plus ions are simply saying, hey, we are positively charged. There's an electron over there. Okay, so copper 2 plus sees electrons. So there's copper 2 plus over there sees the electrons and it attaches itself to that electron and it becomes copper. So it means your ions, remember this, these were in solutions. These are not actual, you can't actually see them, right? So the copper ions, which are usually blue in color, right? Uh, now see electrons and now they go and attach themselves and they form copper over there, right? Now, what begins to happen? This guy keeps producing Zn2+. Plus. Remember, this, uh, this reaction doesn't just occur once, right? Keeps occurring, all right? Uh, keeps forming Zn2+, plus and forming an electron. They're forming electrons. Zn2+, plus forming electrons. This guy over here, copper 2+, plus, right? It's now um, uh, seeing those electrons and attaching itself over there. So what happens at this cathode? So this cathode keeps forming more copper, copper, more copper, and you'll see it begin to gain mass. You remember what we said? We said at the electro at the uh, cathode, the cathode gains mass, so this guy would end up gaining mass. But what would happen to this guy? Because now it's slowly uh, uh, shedding off those electrons uh, and it's shedding off those ions. In this case. Uh, this guy will get smaller and smaller in size. So in this case, you'd see this one becoming smaller in size, uh, corroding in a sense, and this one gaining mass. Okay? I hope that you're with me. Right. Now, um, just the last part that I just want to show you before I get to the 
uh, net cell reaction. So in this case, now what we do have is that those copper ions, you remember that uh, they, they, keep, they kept on leaving, right? Now, what are they leaving behind? Remember, they were not on their own. That copper was with the nitrate ions over there. So you've got nitrate ions that are all over this guy. Okay, so nitrate ions say, hey, but now we are lonely because our partners have left. So the nitrate ions would tend to go to the um, salt bridge and go to neutralize. You remember what we said? We said it neutralizes excess ions, right? But here you keep producing lots and lots of uh, uh, zinc uh, uh, 2 plus ions, right? So those zinc 2 plus ions, there are more and more and more of them. And now they are in excess. So what do they do? They go into the salt bridge, okay, to go and neutralize. So that's the function of the salt bridge to neutralize those excess ions. Ladies and gents, I'm not really trying to make this cumbersome, but I really want you to understand what is happening in this cell, okay? So as a result, okay, we said that uh, um, now the the copper plus ions, uh, sorry, the zinc two plus ions. Now go into that reaction and please I want you to note now they are neutralized over there. So we call these uh, two plus ions, okay, or the positive ions, we call them cations, all right? Um, so we call them cations, right? So the cations, I want you to please note, the cations always follow the direction of the electrons. So the cations will always move uh, in the direction of the electrons. And these nitrate ions that we're talking about, the lonely parts there, okay, now simply say, hey, we are now lonely. They go into the uh, uh, salt bridge and they go and neutralize over there. And in this case, what begins to happen, okay? So they get neutralized over there. So these we call, by the way, those negative uh, ions, we call them um, uh, N ions, right? Right, so uh, remember on this side, we've got cat ions, on this side, we've got N ions, okay? Right, now, just the last thing that I want to show you, ladies and gents. So this reaction, do you see that we've got copper two plus there? But we didn't have copper 2 plus in the reaction. So we are actually, they can actually write this reaction as it's copper, sorry, zinc plus copper nitrate. And I'm going to give you the name uh, of these nitrate ions there, why we wrote it in that way. Okay. And then they give that gives us zinc so remember we didn't have zinc but we had zinc nitrate so this gives us zinc nitrate okay so zn no3 now notice once again okay zn is two plus so i'll put a two over there okay plus copper so you can write down this reaction that way now it means in this format we have written it down with Without the spectator ions. What are the spectator ions in this case? It's the nitrate ions, okay? They remain relatively unchanged, right? So we call them spectators, you know, like in a soccer match, uh, when you go and watch a, a soccer match, you don't participate in the game, isn't it, right? So in this case, uh, um, uh, these guys are just watching, they don't participate in the reaction, and so we call them spectator ions, okay? Right, and by the way, this is perfectly okay, it's sufficient, okay? Right, last thing that I want to show you, ladies and gents, okay? So what I want to show you quickly is we can also write down what we call uh, um, uh, the standard cell notation, okay? And how we write down the standard cell notation for the cell, we'll simply say, the standard cell notation simply says, okay, you start with the anode. So which one is our anode? We said zinc is the anode. So what happens to zinc? It moves from zinc to Zn2+. plus. So it would change from zinc and this simply means change in phase, right? So it changes phase and it becomes zinc 2 plus, all right? And we use this to symbolize the salt bridge. So this 
designates uh, salt bridge okay right uh, sorry it's out of your view there lip a little bit okay so this remember it shows us the change in phase so we know that we are changing in phase so it's moving from solid okay and it goes into aqueous mode right remember we said that zinc is going from solid from being a zinc and it becomes zinc 2 plus so zinc to zinc 2 plus there which is aqueous but on the cathode side so we always have the anode on this side right on the cathode side we'll always have so here we started with copper 2 plus and copper 2 plus changed to copper so copper 2 plus which is the aqueous form of it changes phase and what does it become it becomes copper all right so uh, so uh, remember that copper there is solid it's in solid form okay so in this case this is what uh, this reaction would look like now ladies and gents i've already produced a video where i am uh, going through past exam questions on this so you can go and refer to that video to see how i uh, tackle more of these questions now in this particular question what I, in this particular video rather uh, what i wanted to do was just to show you how this cell actually operates and to give you some of the uh, you know um, um, uh, you know some of the reactions that take place in the uh, galvanic cell okay and i just want to make a shout out to mohammed <laughs> all right uh, who actually asked me to uh, go through this section okay i hope that you'll enjoy this lesson um so i just want to leave it here uh, otherwise from me for now all right i'll see you next time and please just keep working hard ladies and gents and uh, those exams are coming uh, please make sure that you ace those exams all right so uh, until next time i'll see you again sharp sharp